developing a certain circuit for certain purposes, and then I mean an electronic circuit, is not always a very easy. Uh, I published this, say, uh, one week ago, two weeks ago, and perhaps it's interesting to show the developments. At first, the one of the big problems was that the frequency was not stable, and I could uh, repair that. On the other hand, we have to do here with a uh, chip from Texas Instruments. Um, that chip is, by the way, very, very properly developed. That's the first thing I want to say. So, when it doesn't work in certain applications, um, it's not the fault of Texas Instruments. And the more interesting thing is that the, this chip is in fact a very old chip. Um, I found document, documents, electronic documents in magazines that this chip was already used in 1973, 1974. So, my idea was, well, I had uh, the best chip that I could get and say a modern chip, but um, this was in fact a chip out of the 1970s, but on the other hand, it proves that this chip, say, uh, works very properly, was more or less always used, etc., etc., since those days up until now to 2023. Anyway, pen over again. Um, uh, over this schematic, now it's an update on 18 December, not 8, but 18, 18 December 2023. Uh, what are the important updates? Well, there are a few things to tell. Uh, at first, to remove the ripple or out of this chip, and then I mean on the output pin of the chip, and that is pin 4 here, you can use this circuit. Um, I used a 110 ohm resistor to remove the ripple, etc., etc. But of course, when you take it out here directly, you have that ripple. Anyway, so that is an important adaptation. Furthermore, an overview. I move my camera now in this direction to show the whole circuit. Could be boring or irritation. Anyway, uh, when you are interested, you will surely say, forgive me. Anyway, um, the voltage stabilizer is here. The chip needs 5 volts exactly. Here we have 12 volts. I had some issues with the power supply here. It could not deliver 12 volt exactly, but anyway, uh, that 12 volt is necessary here to get to the right frequency range. And that's quite critical. So here we have and the uh, potentiometer of 20k, and I've changed it to 4k7, but uh, uh, don't worry, the whole idea is that he, we have here on pin 9, we need to have here a voltage that 
goes from zero volts up to approximately four volts and that's set by the value of this potentiometer. So it can be 20k but in this case I've now used 4k7. So 4700 ohms. Uh, does that differ? Well, uh, the difference is not important in a certain way because the only idea is that we hear that we have here on pin 9 a voltage that moves from 0 volts to approximately 4 volts. And that sets the frequency. And that also shows in a certain way uh, the problem that I want to address now. Uh, this is now a 10k fixed value uh, resistor here. Here we have a fixed value resistor of 3k7, so no potentiometers here, only fixed value resistors. You can see them here. Of course that's not easy to find them, but anyway they are here. Uh, 2k7 and 1k in series and here the other uh, resistor value. Anyway, uh, what's more, what more to tell about this? Well, uh, I found that the frequency of the oscillator was in a certain way hindered and um, say it moved up and down between uh, uh, a certain frequency of course uh, it worked properly but I needed here a 220 nanofar capacitor to ground and it sets the stability so no more movements on the screen of this uh, of this oscillator let me show it when you when you don't mount that capacitor you will constantly see the waveforms here moving up and down well perhaps it's interesting to show it so I now disconnect that <laughs> that uh, 220 nanofar capacitor. So now you hear all the instabilities here. See all the instabilities. Anyway, of course I cannot uh, uh, solder that uh, capacitor in again because I need two hands anyway. Uh, well, uh, that was the first good idea to make this circuit more stable. So, uh, kind of conclusion, you need here really 12 volts. And um, you need here that capacitor but on the other hand one of the problems was that uh, the frequency um, the, the potentiometer that is responsible for the frequency uh, did not work so properly and then I mean uh, that the the frequency range where the oscillator worked did not want to move in a certain way. I have to solder that uh, capacitor in first, so it will take some time. Anyway, thanks for watching, by the way. Uh, I solder now that capacitor in again you see the movements of the frequency and now it is stable so 
here it is stable now with that 220 nano farad capacitor everything is fixed properly waveform is okay and by the way this is only a vlog waveform is okay very very stable but the problem is now that when you tune that potentiometer there is a, only a limited band where it works so on certain positions of the potentiometer the potentiometer of 4k7 4700 ohms does not work doesn't want to work so on this position it works it can give out different frequencies let's see what will happen on the higher frequencies now we are on 1.3 megahertz anyway turn that potentiometer again it doesn't work but here it starts to work to say set the frequencies the frequency the frequencies so anyway the whole circuit needs more elaboration I hope that was not <coughs> that is uh, in a certain way clear when you want to work with that chip uh, the chip works very very properly you can surely set it to all kinds of uh, square wave frequencies again use here a fixed value resistor and also here uh, uh, connect here that 220 nanofarad capacitor can also be a 50 nanofarad capacitor this is say a resistor with which with that potentiometer you can say remove the ringing in the circuit anyway so also important you can remove the ringing that was kind of earlier issue published in the earlier video so this is more or less all thanks for watching and well let's look at the scope I'm now on 13 minutes on my camera perhaps it's interesting to show some real practical things uh, well um, turn that potentiometer now frequency goes down to 1.3 megahertz that's in fact very very good for a square wave oscillator made with it with this chip and well um go to another frequency band say the lower frequency bands we are now on 694 kilohertz you can also see at the same time that the the frequency band is very very good and then I mean also the waveform is very good so anyway I think I don't have to prove more with this beautiful chip made already in the 1970s thanks for watching again